Welcome back and welcome back to Project ML, as discussed uh, in my daily vlog, if you watched it, uh, we're going to crack on. It's took us, oh, I don't know now, about uh, over two weeks to get my Lemforda track running. So, as I've mentioned, we've done the winter checks and the only thing it needed from standing over the winter was a bit of play in this front tr uh, track run end. So, we'll get that, we'll get it up on the lift, get the wheel off, we've got the new one sat here. As I've mentioned, this is original equipment, exactly what you would get from Mercedes if you got one. Uh, so they've tried offering us the Moog and shite like that. Don't want it. Load of crap. Um, this one is original equipment. As you can see, it's marked up exactly the same as Mercedes markings, which I'll show you on the one that comes off. There's the LM4 markings. When it's such a big heavy-duty car, towing the caravan, and it stands long periods of time, I don't want anything else other than the best for it so we'll get it on the lift and i'll get back here once it's on the lift get the wheel off and i'll show you before i take the wheel off any play that that is in the old unit right the camera decided to knock off there uh, yeah so there we go we've got it on the lift lined up main key thing for anybody before you take a wheel off take your lock and wheel nut off by hand do not use any kind of um air compressed compressed air or electronic impact guns just do it by hand as you can see i've slackened that off It'll just wind out by hand. Because you will give yourself grief, especially on older cars, when you snap them. So there we go. If I can get my fingers in there. As you can see, it's loose. There we go. There's a lot of wheel nut. I was going to get rid of these, but in fairness, on this Mercedes, they're not actually too bad. And when I'm in control of how tight they'll get put back on, we rarely have any problems. So we'll get it up on the lift. And we'll get the track road end, we'll have a look, we'll see, I'll show you what you need to do. I mean, it's not something I would suggest doing on your driveway at home, because nine times out of ten they'll be seized, you'll need heat and stuff like that. So, I'll come back to you when we've got the wheel off. Unless you want to see how easily this lift, which I think is rated at, it's written on somewhere, four point something ton. It's just behind this thing. Yeah, four ton. Like I've said, this probably weighs with a full tank of fuel, bits and bobs in. I think on the logbook, unladen weights 2.2 ton. So I'm guessing about 2.4 ton, maybe, with all the extras in the roof box and everything on. I swear to God, this lift lifts this car like a Nissan Micra. You wouldn't even think there was nothing on it. There we go, that's the safety clocks going up. Then when we get it at the height we need, which is going to be around about there. Put it onto the stops, because obviously it's a hydraulic lift. You don't ever want to trust hydraulic 100%, so that now is on its locks. And there you go. There's two and a half tonne of Mercedes on the lift with these. And to be quite honest, you've seen us put huge camper vans on this. It lifts them just as easy. I've actually never known this lift to ever struggle. Seeing that, a lift four tonne. You'd have to have a hell of a vehicle on there because you can't go off via vehicles vin like the VIN plate because that's your maximum authorised mass. An unladen weight of four tonne would be one hell of a size vehicle come to think of it. Even like a big ambulance or something like that, it wouldn't be four tonne. Empty. Well, not empty, but you know what I mean? Like unladen. So yeah, there we go. We'll get the wheel off and I'll come back to you. Right. I just thought while I had somebody here, I'll show you why we're changing it. So if you work the play on the wheel, I don't know if you can see that. Just look, just there. See that popping up and down? That's it. That is why I just get myself from under the lift. That's why we're changing it. That's a lot of play in that ball joint. That ball joint comes off, this whole wheel comes off. Well, while looking at myself, that whole wheel comes off and you don't want that wheel coming off because believe me, there are big wheels, tyres on this car. One of the 255-60-17s, when I used to park this thing next to my L200, it used to absolutely dwarf it. The wheels, the size of these brakes, I mean, you look at the size of them, the size of your hand, the calipers. So we'll get this wheel off and I'll show you what we're doing. Right, so that's the wheel off. I swear to God, as you see, I work on cars, vans every day. You really forget how much of a beast this car is until you work on it i'm not joking you this wheel i mean it might look nothing from here but let's just let's just put it next to this astra i'm not joking you this wheel must weigh the same as a flipping grown adult look at that difference and that's not just looking i can assure you 
weight. I mean, the wheel on its flat, it, it can actually stand up more or less on its own. It's practically, what, half the height of the average car. <laughs> and then when you look at the width of that to that, and then here's another one, because sometimes you've got to work on comparisons, right? Now, this is yeah, quite a large. I think you'll agree, if I put it next to, you know, like a normal car wheel, a hose wheel system, right? That, when you look at the size of that brake, that, I swear to God, is the size. If, if I could stand back a bit, I, I kind of get it to zoom in. But I'm not joking you, that hose reel is the same size, roughly, as the full disc and brake caliper system on this. Huge Brembo's. I mean, it's really difficult to, um, to, to put into context. I mean, like, a six-pack of Coke, for example. That just only covers the centre half, because this is really zoomed in, of it, of the disc. There's still all the caliper behind there. It's, it's insane. Um, so, yeah, this is why I like towing with this car, because it just tows my caravan like there's nothing on the back. So, onto the task involved. Track rod end. I've got a transmission jack on it for one reason, because you put load on the ball joint, because naturally it's worn, it's going to spin, it'll spin freely inside, and then you'll not get the nut off. So what I've done is, got the new one on, I'm actually going to take that off in a second, I've just get the, got the right fit, give it a bit more clean up, put a bit of oil on, got the weight on here, and you need to free off your tie rod end, which in the case of this is a 22. What we'll do, on my knees, anti-clockwise, Get it on, these will be slack because I purposely left it slack. There we go, that's it freed off. Don't want to get my hands full of copper grease, but there we go, you can see that's free now. Just take it off the point of being tight, and that's that. Now, before anybody says at the end, you're meant to do the track, and yes, it's booked in for four-wheel alignment on Monday coming, so that's why um, I'm just going to bang the new one on. I'm not even going to bother counting turns or nothing. It's just going to go back on to the way I'll leave that, relatively slack to drive it to the um to the four-wheel alignment system uh, center uh so that's slack now now we just need to get this off but i'm gonna like i say i'm gonna take that off first i'm gonna clean the threads up a bit more and uh put some grease on it see we fitted these genuine lamforda ones and we we're like oh it was only a few years ago that was uh that was quick that they've uh gone gone like bad you know yeah, when we looked in the book, this just shows you how time flies. It was 2015, so it's seven years ago. It just feels like yesterday, and the car has actually done about 30,000 miles. So, and it did all urban miles, turning, like, constantly scrubbing on at the tyres, hauling on at these. So that was the reason why um, I'm just going ahead and changing. But as we can see, a little bit of oil on there. I've been leaving that to soak. We're going to put the socket back on. I think it's a 22 as well, so it's the same size as the uh, tie rod. Pop that on, and we'll just get the gun on it and see if it comes loose. As you can see, I've got the high torque Milwaukee on there. Really difficult to try to do this one-handed, but we'll give it a go. There we go. That's the difference. Now, I just want to just zoom in there. As I've mentioned, this has been on for years. Because we've worked on this, we greased this up beforehand. You will not get many cars which have done, how long did I say? Seven years and 30,000 mile, and that's come off like it's brand new. This is just proof I wanted to put on, on my channel about what we do and why we do it, especially on repeat customers, which this car was, um, to do it. So obviously you put copper grease on the threads, and once you've put put the nut or bolt on, you coat it with wax oil, and that's exactly why this still looks as good as new. I'll just see if I can get it out on the floor. Like that there. If I actually clean that up with some paper, it's still pretty much... I mean, that's rust, believe it or not, off the inside of the, um, of the socket, that is. But when you get a good look at that, there, you see, it's still silver. So just, it really annoys me when people just whap a bolt on or a nut on and they didn't put any kind of protection over it, especially if it's your own car. 
Just do it. And it, honestly, that this car has done loads and loads of standing around. This should be absolutely rusted to nothing. And this is the principle of doing the hole underneath of your car when that's actually new with this wax oil stuff. It really does work. So there you go. Now we'll see if that just pops out nicely. Now we obviously we've got this tie rod slack. We've got this off. Now you can take the weight off. And obviously you've got to just give a little whack to the hub there with a hammer. We'll just use a copper one. Obviously I'm going to do this one-handed. I'm going to use my left hand when I'm right-handed because I need the right hand to hold the camera. I'll just see if I can switch it round. So there we go. I've had to give it a bit whack, but we'll give it a final one. I'm, honestly, I'm having to lose. I can't use my right hand and film. I'll give it a bit more whack. There. It, I have given it a couple of knocks. It's dropped down. And as you can see, due to putting grease, you, what you can use is a proper ball joint spit. Like I've got one down here somewhere. I just used it the other day. Um, where was it? See, there it is there. You can use these things, ball joint spitters. But again, when I know that I've been working on a vehicle, I just know for a fact that it will be loose. So now, as you can see, that is spinning. Can you see there? So normally what I would do in this case would be count the amount off, but like I've mentioned, I'm just going to keep that still. So I'm just going to keep it still, and as you see, just wind it off, keep going. What you should do is count these, and when you get them done, get your four-wheel alignment done, but like I've mentioned, it's going in, it's booked in on Monday, so this is just getting put on in any way, shape, or form. But obviously, as long as you don't move, that one, and you're using the like-for-like like part, what I tend to find is you're not a million mile off. So if you turn your, count your turns like that, like up to whatever, 20, 15, and then put it back on at the same amount, I tend to find you do actually get the track, and it will always need checked, but it, it's not sometimes far off. So we'll just get this wound off altogether. As you can see, it's quite a long bar in there. There, right, so that's it off. What we're going to do is get some copper grease. I don't know why it's struggling to focus in on things. Get some copper grease on them threads. And as you can see, let's have a look here. Ah, here's why. I know what happened with this car now. This was in 2015 or 16. It went in. I'll just show my dad this one because he's busy making a coffee. I've got old friends again here. Why is it failed? What's that see on there? Moog. Moog. Mm. Now, you see all of our companies are trying to get with, use Moog, use Moog. And I was even thinking to myself, I was doubting, I was thinking this car should have done more than 30,000 mile and I think it's five, it'd be, it'd be seven, if it's 15, it's seven years, six or seven years. And I was thinking, ah, the Lamb Ford, I should have lasted longer than that. And I was just beginning to doubt, and now I know what it was. This car went away to get some a lot of work done. I think it got rear coil springs, which are a nightmare on these. A uh, bit of welding done. Uh, I think some of these front arms and bottom ball joints. And obviously the place where we sent it to, because we were that busy, they, the, the suppliers they used just couldn't get these uh, Lemforas. So there you go. There's proof in the pudding. Moog. I don't use them. I don't like them. And everybody said, oh, I've never had bother with them and stuff like that. But this is why I've never had much problems ever with the original equipment Lemfora ones. And I'm saying if you do have bother, you're talking, it's 10, 15 years down the line. I mean, I suppose this ain't done bad if it's done 20, 30,000 30, mile in six or seven years. But this car has had light use. Apart from the last year I've had it towing with a caravan, the lady just used to drive the dogs to the beach and back. And I know it's a lot of turning and scrubbing around, but this is why... I don't use Moog, and I don't use any other brands apart from TRW, Lem Forda, and all the proper decent equipment ones. So, what we're going to do is now, clean this threaded bar up, the tie rod, get plenty of grease on there, get the new one, get a little bit of grease, which I'll show you, I've got, I've got the new uh, fittings to go on. I like the way how they nicely come protected, I'm going to leave that on there till it's actually in place, and we'll get a bit of grease on the face of that. I may as well just show you the old one, what I'm talking about. Bit of grease on here so that it needs to come apart if whatever I need to do any work again. And I'll come back to you when I've done that. So there we go. It's nicely greased up. Just screw the new one on. Like I said, you should really be counting these, but it's going in for four-wheel alignment, so I'm just simply taking it up to the top of the tie rod. Like so. Like so. 
And what these do, they kind of go over and in, like if you look like they're tapered. And it goes up to the point. Actually, what I am going to do is put a bit of copper grease on that. Just smear it round. Because that's normally where the C's, where the face touches that raw metal. So now when it goes over the face, it goes into it, as you can see. The copper grease acts as a barrier to uh, stop them seizing together. So now... I'm going to tighten that as it is there. I'm going to pop this into here. I'm going to put some grease onto these threads. So you'll take that off now. The protection. Get some copper grease onto them threads. Onto this little seat area. So when it goes in, it's not going to get stuck. Right, so that's it in place. I just need to nip that up. With this, what I'm going to do is, is just use the transmission jack and you'll see it. Just putting it into place, putting a bit of weight on. Then just jack the arm up a little bit. There now, and now you don't use the gun on these. It's a 21. This you just get a 21 mil spanner, and you get a torx that goes through the top. I can't really film doing that. And then tighten it up, and then go along to here. Get this 22 spanner, nip that up just exactly the reverse of slackening it off, and job done. Obviously, you've got to go and get your four wheel alignment done once you've done that. But I'll leave this video here. You've seen it come off, you've seen it go on. You don't need to watch it struggling on with a spanner one by one turning it just a quick video quick update on project ml four wheel alignment uh i might see if i can do a little bit of a morning film because next monday when it's in i've got my daughter so we normally go across to mcdonald's have a mcdonald's breakfast uh and then i need to go oh that's something else i've done as well may have fingers crossed uh my caravan storage was going to be actually i'll leave this one I'll put this into my daily vlog tomorrow. It'll be a good bit of content for that. So we'll leave that. So there we go. There's Project ML. If you enjoyed this, hit the, I know it's not much, but that's all I've actually got to do to it. Hit the like button. Leave a comment. And if you haven't already done so, hit the subscribe. Catch you later. Bye.